Welcome ladies and gentlemen to The Spoken. Today is the day before the NFL Draft. Today is the 25th. The draft will be on tomorrow on Thursday, the 26th of April 2012 at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, ESPN, 7 p.m. Central Time, for this, so that matters to us, 7 o'clock Central Time. Now, we've been waiting for this for a long time, gentlemen, and it's finally among us. So now we have our mock drafts here between Mr. Derek Williams here to my right and to my left here, Mr. Lance Titwell, of course. I'm your host, Mr. Terry Love. So we're, 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 jump, we're going to go, jump right into it so we can have this segment go ahead and take care of. So, first first two picks, we already know it's been uh, been confirmed. The Colts will go to, uh, will pick Andrew Luck. Second pick, most likely, uh, except for a freaking nature or something. Crazy Something, something happens. happens. Something can happen. uh, I doubt it, though. <laughs> Griffin III is going to the Redskins. But let's go start with number three, which is the Vikings pick. Derek, who do you think will go to the Vikings? Um... The Kalia, I think out of USC, the offensive tackle. I think they have a strong running back, and you got Adrian you Peterson. Play. You got a young quarterback, and I think you want to probably after that build an offensive line around what you got up there. Um, I think it'd be perfect for them. Okay, well, they don't, I don't think they really have a a solid offensive tackle. And they like to run the football, right? So you're gonna need an offensive tackle when you got that beast like Adrian Peterson in the backfield and a young quarterback on his left side. Uh, that all makes really good sense, and I actually do I do somewhat agree with him that that would be a smart move. But unfortunately for the division they are in, they're going to need defense pretty bad because if you look at Aaron Rodgers with Greg Jennings and that whole roster he has, you have Matthew Stafford and uh, Calvin Johnson and Titus Young and all those guys, and then you have now you have Brandon Marshall connected with Jay Cutler. Um, I think they got to go cornerback, and the guy that's sitting there that is the best cornerback in this entire draft, or maybe the best player in this entire draft, is Morris Claiborne. I think this guy is going to give you that. Not maybe not Charles Woodson as kind of player. I think that he can definitely have that kind of talent. Um, but he's, he's a good sized guy. He has really he has a nag for the ball. He's a ball hawk for the cornerback. You know that's that's very important to have in the NFL. He's very fast off of his feet, agility, um, and just great tackler. And that, those are the things you want in a cornerback coming coming out of the draft. You want him learning those things while he's in the NFL. You want him to already know those things. Right, how to do that. Right, so that's my guy. So Third. cornerback, offensive tackle, yeah, I, I I yeah I don't think Clay Horn the best corner in, in the draft. I don't know. I think I like Kirk Patrick at Alabama. I think he's a better cover corner. I think he comes from a better pro system. As far as defensively, the way they cover, the way they play defense is more pro style than LSU. I think he'd be a better NFL corner. Mm, interesting. So let's go with the number four pick about the draft here, which belongs to Cleveland. Cleveland. There you go. I think that they're going to go Trent Richardson. This team, right. have, they have to they have to do something, guys. They have to make a splash. This offense was one of the worst in the league last year. And the, biggest, the biggest reason is because obviously Peyton Hillis didn't want to play there no more. He was injured in and out of the lineup. Uh, they didn't really have anything that could really move the ball. Josh Cribbs is one of their first options on offense, and he's not a very good receiver. He's barely a special teams guy. So they're going to have to get a guy like Trent Richardson. I, I, I was talking to uh, somebody earlier, and they did say that they think that he would fizzle out. Um, and I do agree with that. I think that this isn't the best interest for Trent, but I think this is the best interest for the Cleveland uh, Browns. So I think he's gonna, they're going to pick him up. Derek? Uh, I got Trent Richardson. I got Trent Richardson, young quarterback, Colt McCoy. Uh, I personally think Trent Richardson is the best player in the draft. And uh, if he was actually sitting there at number 11, I want my Chiefs to pick him up. <laughs> but I don't think With that's With already Peyton Hills and Jamal Charles? Why not? He's the best player in the draft. You can deal with that problem later. <laughs> That's a good problem to have. So you figure something out. I mean, you could move uh, Hillis to fullback. You can move Hillis to fullback. You don't, give, you don't give your fullback three years, $9 million to be a hey, fullback. Hey, hey. You, know, <laughs> you don't pass up Trent Richardson either. <laughs> so at risk, at risk. Uh, now, now we're going to Tampa Bay. It has the next pick. Who, who would you say to Tampa Bay? I think they need a corner. I think Kirkpatrick is what they need. I think he'd be perfect for what they like to do. Uh, that division, obviously, with the quarterback play in that division, they're going to need a corner, and I think the best corner in the draft is Kirkpatrick. Uh, actually, let's go back real quick. I have a question. So, would you would you be surprised if the Browns go quarterback or Tannehill? Yes, I would be. I think that they, the Browns have kind of just their body language, their body of work has shown that they're not going to go quarterback first so, round. So McCoy I'm not is. saying. I'm not saying. I'm not. No, hold on. I'm not saying that. They're, they're fully confident and bought in in McCoy, McCoy or they're not going to go maybe second or third round. 
but I don't think they're going to use their first pick Where's on right? a quarterback. When, they are, when, when and all the questions they have, quarterback is not their main, most major concern. Oh, I think they need to build around him, but he didn't have anybody really to throw the ball to. So I think they need they need to build around him. Give him a chance. Okay. Now you're talking about Tampa Bay. Uh, actually, I think I might shock a lot of people on this, but I think I'm going to go with Matt Khalil and Tampa Bay. Biggest reason why is wow. because Josh Freeman is a guy that can move out of the pocket, but last year he had to move out of the pocket a lot. You a great. lot. It's right town, right town. This guy, oh, this guy was at yeah, but you're close, close enough. <laughs> close enough. Yeah, it's close enough. It's a but, right. Freeman. <laughs> yeah, Grandma. The, the, I know his family from right town, so I, I apologize <laughs> for my oh. mistake. But uh, Matt Khalil, I think, I think they're gonna go. I think they're gonna go Matt Khalil. Yeah. I think that, that I think that he is the guy that they're gonna, that's gonna solidify that offensive line. Obviously, he's a tackle. Um, I know they got Carl Nix now, and he's a guard, and, and they have uh, you know a couple other guys that are good. Nice that up. But you know he's going to be playing on. Check this out. He's going to be playing on Josh Freeman's blind side, and that's where they need to protect him the most, obviously. And they don't really have anybody right now that can really do that. So I think that Khalil's going to go to Tampa. Derek, I'm the next choice, St. Louis. St. Louis Rams. You got. Did we get his? I'm sorry. Did we get your Tampa Bay? Yeah, pick? you did. I, I went with Kirk Patrick. Okay, okay, I'm sorry about that. I didn't catch that. Yeah, with the Rams. Um, Losing Brandon Lloyd and having a great quarterback like they do, a good young quarterback like they do, I think Justin Blackman would be perfect for them. If you're able to give Sam Bradford a weapon that, you know, a big time weapon that they need. They got running back, Steven Jackson. They're just missing a playmaker for Bradford. I mean, what better than Justin Blackman? Very interesting. I agree with you. I think that Blackman is the guy. However, I think that St. Louis, don't be surprised if they try to trade that pick. Number six, there's gonna be a team that might give them a deal they cannot refuse. I can't name that team. I'm not even gonna try to speculate because you know how these draft goes. Right. We might have a team that just comes out of, just out of the blue that wants this this number six spot, and they have said they're willing to move. But I think if they stay at six, they're gonna go. They have to. I mean, Sam Bradford right now, guys. I mean, who is he throwing the ball to? Danny Amendola. I mean, let's be real here. I mean, that, that, we're, we got we got to get this guy some weapons. Well, Sam you, Bradford needs some weapons. Would you be surprised if the Patriots move up and try to get him the head? No, head I, I, I think I think I think the Patriots round. actually. You know, that's that's. I'm glad you brought the Patriots up. If there is a team that will trade up and it has the balls to do it, it would be the Patriots. However, Patriots are more one of those teams that don't normally trade up. They're usually ones that like to get more picks. So you know, I think. But I think the Patriots can do. It. They I'm, need they need a size. They need a good good wide right receiver. I'd be very surprised if they trade up for Black. Right. I don't. That's not their character. I think they're cool. They got Brandon Lloyd, and I think they're cool. Yes, Brandon Lloyd and Deion Brent still. I mean, he's, I mean, he's, if they did, know, if they did get Justin Blackman, they're going to go 15-1 and win the Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. Next one, Jacksonville Jaguars. Right. Let's start with you. Jacksonville, surprising sleeper of the draft. Malcolm Floyd, Notre Dame. Me, Michael Floyd. My, what's the Michael Floyd? Michael Floyd, yeah, Michael, yeah, Michael Floyd. Floyd. Notre Dame wide receiver. They need a playmaker in Jacksonville. I can't remember the last receiver they've had in Jacksonville. I think he'd be. I, <laughs> I, I think he'd be perfect for Blaine Gabbert. He'd be a, he's, he, I think he's going to be a steal of the draft. I think he's going to be somebody people are sleeping on. I think he's going to jump up there and be a good player in this league. Kind of reminds me of um, Steve Smith. He's played for the Giants. He's going to be tough, physical. Um, he's short. I, I'm going to go with. Uh, Honestly, I think that this could be a possible trade up for the Chiefs. I think this they, they could maybe make that move. That is just my hope. Right. You guys know that. I want to see the Chiefs go get Tannehill. All Chiefs fans. So. But but I <laughs> but I think if they, if they once again they stay at seven, if they if they stay at seven, I think they're gonna go Melvin Ingram. He's the kind of guy that, that is gonna be able to solidify that defensive line. They they have said that they really like this kid. They're very impressed by him. I mean, everybody's been impressed by him, but Jacksonville needs that kind of guy, and I think they're gonna go for Melvin Ingram if they stay at seven. Yeah. What about Miami? I think that I'm sorry. Did I say yeah? Okay, uh, Tannehill. I think is going to go there. I think that more than likely, realistically, if we, if we all just look at the big picture, he's going to go there. Philbin knows him very well. The Miami, the Dolphins have come out and said they do like the kid. Uh, they obviously whiffed on Peyton Manning, even though they had the billboards and everything. Uh, they need to get a guy in here that's going to make a splash. Tannehill is the guy that if, I think brings. If it. it's quarterback competition, will Tannehill start over more? Maybe not initially. I think that Matt Moore gets another shot at being the quarterback, but I don't think Matt Moore is the guy that's going to take him that next level. And if Matt, if, if Tannehill shows them some things, some promise, I think that you can get, you could see him coming out every once in a while if they're getting blown out or the game's a blowout, whatever it might be. I think you could see Tannehill come out. Tannehill's my first round bust. <laughs> wow. My first round. I'd love to hear the reason for this one. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I just don't think, from what I've seen and watching him on film, that he shows me anything. To me, what I think. 20 and below is cool for Ryan Tannehill. I think I think he's a product of of top heavy. There are only two 
great quarterbacks in this class. Right, I understand. So the and man I goes think, up. Yeah, the, I think he's a pro, he's he's going to benefit from guys like Barkley going back to school. Because if Barkley was up in the draft, we wouldn't even be talking about Tanner Hill. Yeah, like, but, but, but we, no, we'd be talking about you Barkley would be a you know, you know, but we would be like that, moving up in the draft with Osweiler <laughs> and people like that. So I think Kellen Moore is better than Ryan Taylor. I understand yeah. that, but you know what's Mike his stock or what he did. I mean, but I'm telling hey, I will take I will take Kellen Moore over Ryan Taylor <laughs> any day. Let's look at this film in 10 years and we'll see that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, add me on Twitter if you don't believe me. Uh, we can talk. We can debate this on Twitter. I don't know if you got my tweet the other day, but you remember you asked a few a few films back if uh, if I knew any games that he had won. Yeah, he's you the first, He's the first A and M quarterback yeah. to beat Texas, Nebraska, and OU in the same season. Yeah, and so those and, are big games, correct? Those aren't because Texas was way down this year. Oh, so those way aren't big down. wins then. Not not this year. And the, within within your big within the Big Twelve, those aren't big wins. Those no, because those, those are the teams, biggest wins you can get. Those teams, Nebraska, suck. They got beat by <laughs> Northwestern this year. Michigan That's, got beat a couple of years by Appalachian State. They no, we're not talking team. about a couple of years ago. I understand. I'm, I'm giving you examples. Ryan Tannehill. I mean, Good team. I've said it before. Nebraska got beat by Northwestern this year. Northwestern. Not a football school. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this is that's all the time we have for right now. We're gonna, we're gonna come right back with the rest of the selection of their mock draft for at least the top 12 picks of the NFL draft this season. Once again, I'm your host, Terry Love. To First my round right, bust. Derrick Williams to my left. Trade up. Too well. This is The Spoken. We'll be right back. Thank you. The only smart.